back with FashionENTLaw.com. I'm at the Licensing International Expo 2011. And guess who's standing next to me? Miss Stacy Riordan, an attorney out of Los Angeles with Fox Rothschild. Hi, Stacy. how are you? I'm great. Thanks, Iraq, for having me today. Right. Welcome. I'm excited because I think that you're going to share so much knowledge and wisdom in the little time we have uh, with our audience. Very specifically, tell us what you do at your law firm. Um, well, currently, I'm the chair of the Fashion Law Practice Group at Fox, and I do a lot with branding. So our goal is to take your fashion company, or if you're in entertainment or a celebrity, diversify your asset and make sure you have seven streams of revenue so you're making more money off of your famous asset, for lack of a better word. <laughs> That's awesome. You know what's so interesting here? This is my first time attending. Is this your first time too? It is my first time. I'm so excited that we get to do this together. Okay. That's awesome. Now tell us what the experience has been at the Licensing International Expo for you. Oh my gosh, this is the most amazing place ever. There's people, there's executives, there's brands, it's exciting. And you get deals done on a very high level. So unlike Magic or a different show where it's more about fun and fancy, this show is about business. And you have brands sitting down with their licensees and their licensors and they're making money. Yeah, they're ready to do business. The, the party we went to last night was amazing. All kinds of executives ready to talk business. That's right. And that's so exciting. So you see all the guys, they're in their suits. They're like, let's make it happen. Let's do it now. And Nothing makes a girl like me happier than business. I want to come back to the, um, the topic of revenue and making income from licensing. Give us maybe like three tips that you would advise with uh, licensors about how to go about licensing their business. Um, the most important thing is to first do your homework and make sure you have a good partner that has experience in the space where you're going to license into. So if you're very good at one thing, I say you either want to grow your brand horizontally, sorry, or vertically. And if you grow it either way that you choose to grow your brand, you have to have the right partner because you have built up goodwill and the customers like you and your target market believes in you. And if you pick the wrong first partner, you're going to destroy all of that in a minute. So there's your first one. Okay. What are the other two? <laughs> okay, so after you find your, first, your good partner, you want to get a great agreement. And I know I'm a lawyer, but this isn't like come hire me kind of pitch, but it is so important to have a good agreement that you understand and your licensee understands. Otherwise, you don't have that communication with each other. And if you don't have that, their communication and clear expectations are the hallmarks of a good relationship. And your third point, and I know people don't like this, but you should always, always, always audit your licensees because licensors are underpaid 90% of the time by 10% or more. So. so interesting you talked about auditing because at the com this conference, so far so good, that's all we've been hearing about. Auditing, financial books, record keeping has been so key. So definitely you are right on that. Now let me transition to one final question, which is all about fashion law. As a fellow fashion law attorney, I certainly know it's a very niche area that no one really knows what it's about. Could you shed some light? What is fashion law and what about the people that are interested in becoming fashion lawyers in future? Um, to become a fashion lawyer in the future, you need to be an entrepreneur because like you said, there's like five of us <laughs> across the country and people say to me, what, are you, what do you do? You're a fashion lawyer. And I'm like, well, I do a lot of brand building. I do contracts. I go to court. I protect your intellectual property. Very similar to entertainment and to sports, but in the field of fashion. So. The beauty about being a fashion lawyer and interviewing a fashion lawyer is that I can ask what she's wearing. So let's find out what Stacy's wearing and I, I'll let the uh, you tell us what you're wearing. Um, besides the shirt and a belt and skirt and boots, I have no idea who made them. Um, I'm a mom, so I'm normally shopping for my kids. Like I'm so excited to go see Skechers and see if I can get some hot lights from them for my uh, son and daughter. So I don't know. This is a product of my own imagination. I put it together myself on a budget. <laughs> okay, so for all my Fashion Week designers out there, I'm so sorry Stacy doesn't know your brand, but she's rocking it regardless. Thank you so much, Stacy. Thanks for having me. You're welcome.